We are in the Trihack Need Room, Living of the Land. Learn the essential concept of living of the land in Red Team Engagements. Application Whitelisting Bypasses Bypassing Application Whitelisting Application Whitelisting is a Microsoft Endpoint Security feature that prevents malicious and unauthorized programs from executing in real time. Applications Whitelisting is rule-based where it specific where it specifies a list of approved applications or executable files that are allowed to be present and executed on an operating system this task focuses on lolbos examples that are used to bypass the windows application whitelisting all right a bit confusing moving to the next one reg svr.32 uh, reg svr.32 when i was scrolling this reg svr.32 in this lolbos project i said i am going to explain it later so this is the binary reg svr32.exe uh, used to used by windows to register the dll register and unregister the dll that is the functionality of this reg svr32.exe but this reg svr32 binary can also be abused by malware authors uh, even when i was making a video about the emotet malware uh, I witnessed a specific emoted sample was using this specific uh, executable, specific binary to execute the DLL that it has downloaded. And I just wanted to bring this here. So I'll be adding that video link as well in the description. Uh, so here is the path, the location of that specific uh, executable. Besides it, besides its intended use, reg svr32 binary can also be used to execute arbitrary binaries and bypass windows application whitelisting according to the red canary reports reg svr32 exe binary is the third most popular attack techniques so this is one of the binaries being utilized by the malware authors most of the times adversaries leverage this binary to execute native code or scripts locally or remotely the technique used in the reg svr32.exe uses trusted windows os components and is executed in memory, which is one of the reasons why this technique is also used to, to bypass application whitelisting. Yeah, they also gave the reasons uh, why this specific uh, executables being used most of the times. Let's try to apply this technique in real life. First, we need to create a malicious DLL. Creating malicious DLL is not a big deal. You can either create it manually if you are familiar with the code. Otherwise, you can use the tool like MSF Venom to create the DLL file and set up a Metasploit listener, receive a reverse shell. Note that we will be creating malicious file that works for 32-bit operating systems. We will be using reg svr32.exe application whitelisting bypass techniques to run commands on the target system. All right, so here they give the definition. Um, I mean, the detailed process. Uh, they are using MSF Venom. And they are creating, they are, they are specifying the specific uh, host, IP address, and the DLL file. They are creating the DLL file here. It's a payload actually, the living of the land DLL payload. And once the payload is created, and the next one is MSF console hyphen Q. They are running this MSF console in a quiet manner and pawning the listener, exploit multi handler. And they are setting up the listening IP and the listening port. Finally, they are initiating the listener here. Note that they specified the output type as DLL using the hyphen F argument. So this is what they are referring. Once the malicious DLL file is generated, we need to deliver the payload to the victim's machine. We will do this by using either a web server or you can serve the DLL file on our attacking machine as follows. So all you need to do is you need to serve that specific file to your victim, right? So you can either spawn a specific web server and you can pass this through that web request. And from the victim's machine, visit the web server of the attacking machine on port 1337. That is what you mentioned here. You can mention any port number of your wish. And once the on the victim's machine, once the DLL file is downloaded, Execute it by using the reg svr32.exe. So this is the part we were seeing while analyzing the specific emoted malware. Uh, actually, that malware was using this reg svr32 binary 
and it used this specific binary to execute the dll that it downloaded and uh, this is the command actually they are simply calling that uh, reg svr binary and they are calling the dll simple and uh, the second command they can either i mean they can also use this specific command with forward slash s forward slash n forward slash u forward slash i so let's see what it is forward slash s denotes the silent mode forward slash n not to call the dll register server so we are not going to register the dll instead we are going to execute the dll and the next one forward slash i to use another server since we used forward slash n and forward slash u is to run with unregistered method on the attacking machine we should receive the reverse shell now we already initiated the listener here right so once you execute this specific thing with the help of reg svr32 you must be able to see a session on this specific thing specific uh, attacker machine note that if we wanted to create 64 bit dll version we need to specify the msf venom command to run it from the victims machine using the 64 bit version all right based on whether it is 64 bit or 32 bit executable you have to call the suitable file as i said there are two locations for this file two architectures so yeah once you uh, you know click once you enter the exploit you will be able to witness the interpreter session from the victims box and yeah that is what they just gave the theoretical explanation here but we can definitely spend some time on this and we can create we can perform uh, all those suggested things here so scrolling down further born against shell in 2016 microsoft added support for the linux environment on the windows 10 11 and server 2019 this feature is known as windows subsystem for linux actually the feature windows subsystem for linux enables its user to access the linux operating systems on windows machine and when they provision this specific windows subsystem for linux feature they also created this bash.exe bash is actually uh, a typical linux shell but they created a windows executable for this bash shell so it is actually a microsoft tool for interacting with linux environment people found ways to execute payload and bypass the windows application whitelisting since it is a microsoft signed binary by executing bash.exe hyphen c and the path to payload i mean the payload we can execute the unsigned payload as well so actually the micro attack framework calling this technique as indirect command execution so i can go through the specific link and to read further about this indirect command execution technique adversaries may abuse utility that allow for command execution to bypass security restrictions that limit the use of command line interpreters all right and if i scroll down further here is the simple thing bash.exe hyphen c and calc.exe uh, a simple thing we are they are using bash.exe to call the calculator and in this specific machine we cannot try this command because the specific machine is not enabled with windows subsystem for linux you have to enable that windows subsystem for linux manually in order to use this bash.exe executable and that is what they mentioned here i believe in the windows subsystem for linux in windows 10 to use bash.exe bash binary Pardon me. Note that you need to enable and install the Windows subsystem for Linux in Windows 10 to use bash.exe binary. Also, the attached VM doesn't have the subsystem for Linux due to some virtualization restrictions. They haven't enabled the Windows subsystem for Linux. So we cannot execute the specific command here. Uh, so yeah, with this, we are just winding up this specific part. And the next one is other techniques. Other techniques. This section highlights a couple of interesting techniques used, whether for initial access or persistence. The following techniques belong to the living of the land umbrella since they can be used as a part of Windows environment utilities. All right. So let's see uh, other techniques that we can use. 
to establish the persistent sort of things uh, shortcuts the first file the first concept the shortcuts are symbolic links that are techniques used for referring to other files or applications within the operating system once the user clicks on the shortcut file the reference file or application is executed often the red team leverages this technique to gain initial access privilege escalation or persistence so if you see the properties of one of the shortcuts actually they are referring the excel shortcut here and if you if you see the target here they are mentioning the specific executable file and here they can manipulate that executable file and whenever that executable i mean whenever the shortcut file is being clicked obviously it will be redirected to the specific target location and the mitre attack framework calls this shortcut modification technique and let's see what is shortcut modification technique uh, boot or log on auto start execution shortcut modification adversaries may create or edit shortcuts to run programs during system boot or user logins shortcuts or symbolic links are ways for referring i mean ways of referencing other files or programs that will be opened or executed when the shortcut is clicked or executed by the system startup process uh, so they are simply trying to say that shortcut files can also be one of the payloads to to bring the malware in your to your system that is what they are simply trying to say and i am scrolling further to run the shortcut modification technique we can set the target section executes files using run dll powershell reg svr32 executable on the disk and the attached figure shows an example of shortcut modification technique so this is what they are trying to say and even i can prove this here uh, i'm just uh, having a shortcut here a google chrome start shortcut if i am clicking properties of this shortcut i can see the target here the target it is obviously referring to that specific chrome.exe location so this is where this is where the threat actors modify usually and they modify and they try to add some other malicious binary path here so whenever this executable is being clicked it will be redirected to this specific location and actually that will be executing the specific binary in that location and the next part is no powershell so i am going to split this specific part no powershell and i am going to make this as a separate video so you will be getting this video subsequently let's move directly to this task a real life scenario actually in the real life scenario they simply gave some of the incidents that happened in the past where the threat actors used this living of the land binaries to exploit their target and that is what they gave uh, it is just a list of uh, articles that they gave i mean uh, that already published so let's try to read this this task introduces showcase of malware that used the, uh, that, that used the techniques discussed in this room in 2017 windows defender advanced threat protection research team discovered fileless malware named astroth so it is fileless malware and a fileless malware means that the malware runs and is executed in the system without writing to the disk the malware performs all its functions from the victim's device memory astroth is known for known as an information stealer which takes sensitive information from victim users such as account credentials keystrokes and other data and sends it to the attacker the malware relies on the various advanced techniques such as anti debugging anti virtualization anti emulation tricks process hollowing ntfs alternate data streams and living of the land binaries to perform different functions all these functions mentioned here here are the advanced functions that any malware can equip and in this initial access stage attackers rely on spam campaign that contains malicious attachment files the attached file is an lnk file shortcut that once the victim has clicked it uh, will reset the following the w i mean everything began with one short shortcut file an lnk file and once they clicked it these things took place 
and the WME command executed to download the JavaScript code. We have already seen this. And also the bits admin executable abused to download multiple binaries from the command and control server. Interestingly, in some cases, malware uses YouTube channel descriptions, uh, you know, it's, you know, it, YouTube channel descriptions as well to download the further payload. And using the bits admin ADS techniques to hide their binaries within the system for their persistence. A sort util tool to use to, to decode the couple of downloaded payloads into DLL files. And the DLL files are finally executed using the reg svr 32 All the living of the land binaries highlighted in these steps uh, we have already seen. Uh, we said it is one of the popular binaries. And all these binaries uh, were being used during this Asteroth banking Trojan uh, exploitation. So it, this banking Trojan used all these techniques. So if you if you are able to read through the specific articles, you might get an idea. So let me open the article that we have. I will add the article links in the video description so you can feel free to refer. While it is loading, uh, let's finish this uh, specific uh, section. Astroth malware hides command services, command servers in YouTube channel descriptions. This totally weird and stealthy technique. Astroth banking trojan. Here they gave the article about this banking trojan. If I scroll down further, they mentioned about delivery. First campaign, second campaign. Bits admin abuse, alternate data streams abusing, DLL hijacking, loading Astroth in memory as a DLL. Yeah, here they clearly explained about the techniques that the Astroth banking trojan equipped. And Trend Micro also came up with an article related to this info stealer. So this is it. This is what I wanted to showcase. Just moving to the conclusion part. In this room, we have covered the general general concept of living of the land, as well as went through some of the examples seen and used during red team engagements. Living of the land techniques can be used for various purposes, including, including reconnaissance file operations. The same thing here, the same thing they mentioned once again. And one more link, one more uh, project I I wanted, I, you know, I want to introduce to you, GTFO bins, like LOL BAS, LOL BAS. Uh, which give, which keeps the list of Windows binaries, the specific GTFO bins uh, for Linux binaries. Uh, the Linux binaries that can be used by the threat actors, the malware authors. Here are the list of Linux binaries. And also they give the functionalities here. What are the functionalities of that specific binary? And uh, yeah. This is what I wanted to explain about the living of the land binaries. Living of the binary, I mean, living of the land binaries are, uh, of course, uh, created for some legit usage. However, it is being used by uh, adversaries and threat actors for some nefarious purposes. And hope we learn uh, some of those purposes and some of those interesting binaries. Uh, hope you really enjoyed this. If you really did, Hit the like button and consider subscribing my channel. If you have any other opinion, put it in the comment section. I'll be reading those comments and responding to you. And you can also share this video among your friends. Hope you really enjoyed it. I'll catch you next time with another exciting video. Until then, I'm signing off. Cheers and uh, love you guys.